fall in a crevasse. A crevasse, I uh, know. Well, apparently. Oh God. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Legends and Libations with Ozark Researchers of the Beyond. I'm Kylie and this is Lindsay. And today Lindsay's gonna tell us about the blowing cave shaver mystery. And I'm super excited because I don't know anything about this. I didn't either till a couple days ago. Perfect. <laughs> science fiction um, fans out there, any science fiction buffs out there, they might be more familiar with this than most. I'm not, I don't know jack shit, but um, there, there is a, a gentleman named Richard Shaver who is a science, a science fiction author of some kind, um, who he wrote about an underground race of beings. It's giving um, me like Atlantis vibes. I don't know Atlantis. Well, like the kids movie where they like, you have that big drill thing and they go into the earth and there's the guy that's kind of like, he has major mole person vibes. No, I don't know this movie. Oh, you gotta watch it. It's classic. I'm old. How old is it? It's like new. No. Oh. It's from like, I don't know, early 2000s, maybe? I was in junior high school. Hey. I was busy it's like trying to figure out makeup and still like. Still cool though. How my boobs <laughs> like affected How? things. How? <laughs> How boobs. Yeah. Well, this gentleman, Richard Shaver, he wrote a story that had an underground race of these bluish hued beings inside the earth. Like Avatar? Oh. <laughs> I don't think they're like Avatar, but maybe kind of like Avatar. Okay. They don't have those faces. They have, they're like human. They said they're human-like. Just is what Shaver has has put out in this little story of his. Um, however, shortly after that story was released, a man named George D. White um, allegedly found a network of tunnels and channels running through a cave called the Blowing Cave down in Cushman, Arkansas. This cave has had rumors going, dated back from the 1950s. Okay. So there's kind of something there, but then again, we're talking about Arkansas and Podunk, Arkansas, yeah. and like, all right. Well, should we pause and yes. try our drink here? Yes. So, what did we decide this was? Made? Heart of the inner earth. Oh, yes, yes. So, we have I'm a, sad. <laughs> a very uh, scary classy drink, though, I'm going to say, because what I saw her do was classy <laughs> shit after she figured it out. Yeah. We had to float uh, some Merlot over some, what do we have here? We have tequila, mm -hmm. lime juice, um, grenadine. and grenadine shaken, poured into our glass. We floated some Merlot over it. Um, we're both, I think, a little bit <laughs> nervous about this because uh, there's a lot of alcohol in here, Ugh. but it's pretty and it feels fancy. It does feel very fancy with a lime. It's not bad. No. It's not bad. The first, okay. I mean, I get straight wine at the very beginning. Yes, that's what I was gonna say. Your first drink is just Merlot. It's almost reminiscent again to me about like a chocolate covered cherry almost. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Because it's almost like I'm getting like dark chocolate with the wine. Mm hmm. And then like the grenadine tequila mix, which I don't like tequila. It's got a wang at the end of it. You can't taste the wang. I can't taste the wang. And I really yeah. think the grenadine saves it in the lime juice. Yeah. Your squeezing efforts really oh, pay gosh. off. Oh gosh, yeah. It, we were, we intended to have simple syrup, but I didn't have any and I wasn't gonna make any. Oh, so you can make some. Yeah, no, I don't wanna do that. So we did the grenadine instead and I think the grenadine goes a long way in masking the tequila. But this one is a win and it feels, it's like a pinkies out kind of situation. It's good and it's not. Mm-hmm. It's one of That's those. That's how I felt about the Lake Conway monster, though. Yeah, no, it, this gives but me. But I suck that thing down. Same. Look at me. I'm I know, sucking I this thing down. Uh, yeah, it's not. I, I can smell the tequila. I straight up smell the tequila. I think that's why. I think just, whoa. You still go in breathing. Hmm? You don't go in breathing. Breathe in your mouth yeah. when you go in. 
every time. I'm surprised my We're front teeth look like, as good. We're gonna have like a whole reel of just Lindsay smacking her teeth onto stuff. Cushman's located in Independence County, um, northwest of Batesville, Arkansas. I'm with you. Cushman, Arkansas is a blip on the map of nowhere. Um, I'm pretty sure the <laughs> census that I saw was in 2019 and it had like 453 people in it. I don't know if that's necessarily true. I didn't look too hard. Um, but. So, not a lot going on there. No. It used to be, um, it was, it was established in 1886 as an accident, this town of Cushman. An accident. <laughs> that's what it said. And, um, but it was an important shipping and trade center 72 years after it was established. Um, it was a big mining town, which I don't know what this means, of manganese mining industry. That's a thing. I've heard of that. I don't know what it is. I didn't look too hard on it. I just, I felt the story manganese. was more important. Manganese, I thought that was like... I feel like it's something you put in explosives, probably. Oh. Okay. Well, I'm far off on that. I but... I'm just making that up. I mean, if there's a little cave, I'm going to kind of look, look see. Mm -hmm. Now, if I don't have my headlamp, I get really weird about some things. Even like, well, this what is something. fall in a crevasse? A crevasse. I know. Well, apparently... Oh God. Apparently. Okay. It's rumored that, um, the blowing cave. Has an entrance to the inner earth. <laughs> that was a dramatic pause. Well, it was because I have directions on how to get there. <laughs> to the inner earth. One must slip through a hidden crevasse. Shit! <laughs> Between the cave's entrance and the lake. The lake and the cave? A cave lake? The lake. I guess there must be a lake and an entrance to the cave. So adjacent to the cave is the... <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, okay. Oh. It says, okay. Rumor has it that the entrance to the underground empire... To get to the inter entrance of the Underground Empire, one must slip through a hidden crevasse between the cave's entrance and the lake, and then through another crevasse, which mm. leads to a stairway. There are reports dating back to the 1940s and 50s of interactions with this mysterious race. I mean, there's literally people right now today that believe in Hollow Earth. Yep. So. This is weird. We're not talking about, ho we're not talking about hobbits. No, Wizards. that's Middle Earth. Middle Earth. We're talking about inner, inner Earth. Hollow. Within. Yeah. I don't know shit about I wish, hobbits. I stuff. wish it was hobbits. It'd be a lot cooler, probably. Yeah. So we got some underground people. We go through the crevasse, we go through the other crevasse, and there's stairs. Yes. I mean, that seems like a very a huge landmark to look for when you're yeah. going spelunking. So I guess Shaver is... I guess he stated that there, like, there was remnants of two advanced races, the Tarot and the Darrow, the good and the evil. Well, that's like aliens. Right. Well, they lived in vast caverns underneath the Earth's surface. 1950s, uh, White was a UFO buff from Michigan. White knew of Richard Shaver's claims published in the 1940s uh, in, the, in the Ziff. Davis, science fiction magazines, amazing stories, and fantastic adventures. White, who originally was skeptical, 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 love it, skeptical of all these claims, but was very interested in spelunking. 1966 rolls around. The group, now consisting of 12 individuals from 3 to 12, went down to Cushman, Arkansas, to explore the Blowing Cave for a week-long expedition. Um. And upon their return, uh, they wrote letters to an old editor of the magazine that they worked for. His name was Ray Palmer, explaining that they encountered intelligent beings. Those letters explained that they encountered inner earth beings, the Shaver's Taros, the good. The good. Oh, well, that's good. Um, deep inside the cavern. With no reply from Palmer, um, White decided to go back to the cave and stay with the underneath people. He returned to, uh, in 1967 to give David L., a columnist for the magazine, a written account and asked David L. to pass on uh, the diary to Marco and then returned to his tarot friends, never to be seen again. Um, David L. had lost track of that Marco gentleman until 13 years later. Uh, 13 years after the encounter with White, he got in contact with Marco. 
Um, he tracked him down and gave him White's manus manuscripts and the, the effects that the manuscripts and everything that he uh, read from White um, is believed that it led to Marco's premature death. <laughs> because, because of all the claims he was making and everything he said, it, I guess it got Marco obsessed and like he like, he believed what he was saying, I guess because they both believed in Shaverian concepts. Because Richard Shaver wrote about this, George White discovered the tunnels to the inner earth people that Shaver mm -hmm. was talking about. And Marco was very much into what Richard Shaver was saying and preaching that he went out and lectured people about what Richard Shaver was um, speculating in his story. The manuscripts that he turned into Marco, White, turned into Marco through David L. We're saying uh, that the group spotted a light at the end of the tunnel, and as they approached the light, White noticed a narrow crevasse, just big enough for him to squeeze through, and his friends followed. White wrote, quotation, Suddenly we came to a large tunnel corridor about 20 feet wide and just as high. All the walls and the floors were smooth, and the ceiling had a curved dome shape. We know this... We know that this was not a freak of nature, but man-made. We had accidentally stumbled into the secret cavern. Dang. I want to see these manuscripts. Yeah. Soon they encountered blue-skinned, but otherwise human-like individuals. They told White's gang that they had uh, permitted them to find the tunnel because um, they allowed them to enter the tunnel because they were able to measure the people's emotions with a device. Whoa, aliens! Good intentions were of the best interest for everyone. And what did I say about Dude. meditating and having good intentions? Dude, these are like, what, the the light beings or whatever? Yeah. Just gave me goosebumps. So that's like, white is like a godly, higher yeah. up beings. Aliens! They learned that the tunnels went on for hundreds of miles and led to um, the under-earth cities. Populated by entities that include serpent-like creatures hmm. and Sasquatch hairy bipeds. Whoa! Yeah. Um, soon after meeting, uh, soon after they met these individuals, they were taken to an elevator type place that led them to the under earth's place of residence which was made of glass so like these people i guess in the under earth lived in places that were consistent of glass like just glass Whoa. i don't know it was very hard to follow hey but it sounds like i mean it goes deeper and deeper almost it's almost like an inner star trek instead of out in the universe it's like inside the universe like in our earth planet yeah. it's weird I like it. But I mean, like, for how big the planet is and how like deep it can probably go and the layers that there are, like... Like, wouldn't it be hot, though? I'm sure. Maybe that's why they're blue. I don't know. I don't know. Blue means they're cooler? I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Um, so... Oh. It's said that their guides were Noah's direct descendants. <laughs> Stories. They were direct descendants of Noah who uh, found their way underground during the flood where they found super technology hmm. and the remains of an advanced civilization along with Taros. Are those the good people? Yes. Okay. And so I guess they built upon that. Okay. Um, no one on the surface believed the group's claims. Why would Imagine you? Imagine it. Um, but they vowed to bring back evidence. Um, which during an expedition they captured a giant cave moth and preserved it in a bag and brought it to the surface with them. However, once they opened the bag on the surface, the moth disintegrated in the sunlight. Like a vampire. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. White decided to stay with the underground people and soon evidence of his existence began to disappear. School records, birth records, work records. Whoa! All gone. He came back to the surface in 1980 to meet uh, David L. Marco, and then that's <laughs> I guess that's where I just stopped and was like, that's enough. Um, I guess records of him decided they disappeared. So 
I did a little bit more research last night on my story. Okay. Just because I was like, well, I need to do better in my stories. Like, sometimes there's really not a whole lot you can find out there on this stuff. Mm -hmm. This one had a little bit more than I was expecting. All about saying about the same things, but I did find something that someone that posted in a forum post, like, said. Oh, fun. Which straight relates to what I just and first initially wrote about this George D. White gentleman who said he dis discovered a subterranean civilization in our earth place in the blowing cave. This guy is a fellow, you know, legends lover, apparently, because he's on this, you know, forum of, you know, legends. And, um, which I didn't write it down, I'll figure it out. Um, someone posted on the forum stating uh, if they knew anything about the Blowing Cave in Cushman, Arkansas. And this guy responded to his post on this forum and said that he did some heavy research on this topic and he came up with some really interesting things. He got in contact with one of the widows of the one of the old school Hollow Earth research guys who first explored the Blowing Cave. Was that White's wife? And she gave him copies of a lot of his old files. This included uh, diaries, old magazine articles that her husband wrote, um, old letters, uh, maps. Dang. Uh, he goes on to state after personally going through the cave, however, it was all, not surprisingly, a hoax. Oh, dang makes it. Makes for a good story. But it makes you wonder, though, just because. <clears throat> or what if? What if? He goes in there and he's like, oh shit, something's happening here. He's getting like publicity or whatever and he feels like he has to protect it That's or what hide I, it. Right? But what if it wasn't like, what would a logical explanation for his disappearance even be? That makes no sense. Or why people aren't even looking into it. Yeah. Mm. But, like is his wife just covering for him? I have so many questions. Maybe, maybe he's found like a tunnel system to the point where he knows where how to like get here and back. Like mm -hmm. he's able to like visit. No, like no issue coherently. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. It's I don't weird. Know. So do people? So obviously there was that one forum guy that's going there or like knows about it or was interested in it enough. I've never heard of this. Mm -hmm. Seems like one of those like weird hush hush kind of things. Like well, so so I am like. On Facebook, I'm like part of like these hiking groups and like waterfall groups and like cave groups and like some people that are like, I mean they're posting pictures from back in like the late 90s, early 2000s and like nothing since then. It seems like amongst the caving community since it almost feels like since that bat shit, um, mm -hmm. which was back when I was in high school because we would go to Devil's Den for field trips mm -hmm. and then I remember one year they were like can't go in the caves and we we're like, boo what? So. I don't know. I don't know if, like, maybe all caves leave to inner earth. You know what I mean? Like, man. And, I mean, this is right in the Ozarks. Yeah. So you have, like, the karst topography. You have the limestone. It's very porous. It's getting in there. It's dissolving away. Science and such. I mean, it, at the very least, they could all be... All the caves could be connected, even if it's not, like, a... No, yeah inner earth no i believe that for sure too what if it's just like some sort of okay <coughs> i could see this being some sort of like hillbilly secret society living in caves they're blue for some reason Colossal, but they're, they're, they're not Colossal. like aliens or another race they're just humans that live underground that like evolved into something yeah, else like mole people but like hardcore interbred mold people yeah Maybe that's Every, what they are. Th everything's... If they're descendants from Noah, I mean, like, it was just Noah. That's true. So, maybe they're just, like, so interbred that they're blue and they're under, underground. Is it Mississippi blue people or the Memphis blue people or the, the people who are so interbred that yeah. they're blue? Yeah, I don't know where, but yes. Well, I'll put a picture up. So Fascinating. When I worked at a health food store... People would come in and take supplements, and there would be like people who come in and take uh, buy like colloidal silver supplements. 
However, if you take too much colloidal silver, just like if you get too much like beta carotene, beta carotene turns you like orange. Mm -hmm. However, well like with colloidal silver, if you take too much, it turn, literally turns you blue. Forever? Forever, irreversible. And like you look dead, like you're walking around like you've been holding your breath. So blue people living inside our earth, which I mean would make sense because they're not getting any sunlight. So I mean, look color skin, would your skin be other than I think they'd be translucent. White, you know, I mean, yeah. me too. You'd be able to see your like organs and shit. <laughs> Whoa, that would be cool. Maybe those blue people that we were talking about earlier like escaped from. They were sick of the scrutiny. Yeah. So they went underground. Ah, uh, this is so okay. I, we have to go here. I'm well, at least do the tour. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if anyone has been to Blowing Cave or gone on the tour. I'm very curious to know. I would if, love to know. If they talk about this, if they talk about like the sci fi. Well, because the, I sent you that picture of the owner's sign. Yeah, and it talks about Bigfoot or. It's like they are not liable for ghosts. heart attack strokes, um, alien abductions, and ghosts. Like, that's fun. And I'm just like, that sounds like a hot ride. I'm ready to ride. Yeah. Let's go. I don't know. I We might have to do a follow-up on this one because this is like... I was hoping I'd be like, oh, we got permission to go there. And then we'd like cut through to yeah, our could, time there. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> this would be a whole episode of something. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I don't know. I like the idea of like a secret underground yeah, civilization. Too. That sounds fun. I, I'm interested in these books now. Like I, I don't know. We're definitely gonna have to look them up. Um, yeah, I'm not a big science fiction person, even Maybe though I like follow a lot of science fiction shit. Well, let us know if you've heard about the Shaver mystery. Yes, if you've been to Blowing Cave. Yes. Hopefully, we will be able to go and we can do a follow up on this. But uh, make sure that you're subscribed to our channel. Um, we're trying to put new videos out every three weeks right now. Mm -hmm. Two or three weeks, see what happens. We will have another legend and libation for you in a couple weeks. Thanks. Thank you. The libate award. The, waiting to libate. It is now. Mm. Mm. It's okay. It's a black shirt. It missed him. <laughs> it missed Trippy. <laughs> oh, sort of. Teeth sounds gross me out. Well, like, okay, I went and picked up Kingston one time when he was, like, two from my mom's house. My mother, okay? And he, I get him, and he's all smiling at me, and there's this huge chip. I mean, like, not just, like, a little, I'm talking, like, half his tooth is gone. His baby tooth? Oh. Front baby tooth. Oh. And I was so upset, and I was like, you look like a fucking hillbilly. Here we are. <laughs> um, and I was like, you're, you're, like, one and a half. I'm like, it's going to take... Or maybe it's like two. I was like, it's gonna take it until you're six to lose them. Yeah. Oh, when he lost that tooth, I was so excited. Oh. But. Did the tooth fairy only bring like half, half seas? No, his very first tooth he uh, lost, he swallowed. So mom had to do a little treasure hunting. Didn't come up with anything. We wrote a letter to the tooth fairy. Oh. Yeah. Watch out when you have kids, you might have to dig through shit. Literally. Dude. No. I didn't. What if it never came out? What if it's still in you there? You got a tooth in you. Hmm. It's probably gonna like turn into a teratoma. Okay. It tastes like if you licked a pine oh. tree's butthole. That's what Jen is. When mm -hmm. I lived in Maine, like I would play outside and I would try to climb trees a lot. Well. And like I would get the sap on my hands. And like, <laughs> so when I was lung, when, when I was born, I was born sucking my fingers. I guess like my that had to feel bad bone. coming out. <laughs> uh, my mom said I had calluses on my fingers. Oh. Yeah, that's weird. I mean, like I suck my fingers so I was 11 oh, years babies old. Babies are so weird. They really are. But I suck my fingers so I was 11 years old. 11 years old. So when I was like five, climbing trees and shit, I would like be done, go inside, and just suck my fingers. It's just like pine tree sap. <laughs> I don't know. Explains a lot. Edit that shit out. No, um. <laughs> I, I like that story. <laughs> Dude, I think this is why we're friends, because I had a pacifier until I was, like, seven. Straight oh, up. that was going to be him until, like, you know, I made sure that was never going to be him. Yeah. yeah. People don't like to talk about this, and if they say they didn't have something fucking weird when they were a kid, they're lying to you. Fingers. <laughs> pacifier. My sister, thumb. Yeah. Kids. Oh, they're strange. Kids are fucking weird. We're all weird. <laughs>
Yes, Francine, we know she knows. And I love her for that. This is the second time she's responded to what I've said.